so now uh, we're turning to Joshua, and I'm turning also, and I believe, uh, is it 24? I've got it in my notes here. Yes, Joshua 24. So uh, if you're familiar with the history of Israel, uh, Israel uh, started with Abraham, then uh, went to Isaac, then went to Jacob as far as the covenant from God. God covenanted, and remember, a contract is based on distrust. A covenant is based on trust. And so God came to Abraham and said, I'm going to make a great nation out of you. He died, Isaac his son. God came to Isaac and reestablished the covenant. Isaac died, and then we get to Jacob, and God comes to Jacob and reestablishes the covenant. And then Joseph is separated from the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel, the prince of God. And he has 12 male children that the Israelite tribes come from. And Joseph is sold into slavery, and that's a whole other story that we will get to later in this series. But as a result of God's providence, his hand moving before the Israelites even knew they were in trouble, God sets Joseph up as the second in command in Egypt. And when a famine comes upon all the land, the children of Israel move to Egypt for God to care for them. Well, that's all well and good, but when 400 years advance, now they've become slaves to the Egyptians. God had blessed the children of Israel so much that the Pharaohs said, they're getting greater than our people. If we don't enslave them, they're going to take over the joint. And so they became slaves to Egypt. As far as we understand, Egypt was the greatest military power at that time. And so uh, the Israelis were an agricultural group. And so when you're faced with the greatest and most powerful chariot army known to man, you basically say, okay, we'll do your bricks. And so they started uh, building bricks for the nation of Egypt. Well, after 400 years, the children of Israel cried out to God over and over and over. And if you'll read those uh, last few books of the first five of the books of the Bible, you will see there how the Bible says that God heard their prayers. And as a result, he raised up Moses. Moses uh, went through a tumultuous time but finally, at 80 years old, he comes back to lead God's people out of bondage. He was a Christ type. And as a result of the 10 plagues, God, uh, if you will, justly judging Egypt for how the harsh treatment they had done to his children, he delivers them through Moses' hand. He brings them through the Red Sea. He brings them on the other side. And now they're going into the promised land. But the 12 spies go. And the two spies come back, jo uh, Jake, Joshua and Caleb, and say, it's ripe for the picking. Let's go. But the other 10 spies, no, 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 no. We, no, we can't do that. God has delivered us into the hands of these giants. Now, they, that wasn't those, their words, but that's essentially what they were saying. And so the children of Israel were now judged themselves into 40 years of wilderness traveling, and this is what happened. Every person over the age of 20 died in the wilderness because of their unwillingness and being unfaithful to follow God's word. And then every person 20 and under, they were now, after 40 years, 60 year old and under. And Joshua is established as the leader. Moses has long died. And jo Joshua is the leader. And the book of Joshua tells the story of how God gave the promised land into Israel's hands. So now at the end of the book, 
Joshua is giving his farewell. And what we're fixing to read here in just a few moments is exactly that. It's Joshua's farewell to the children of Israel. Now, I'm going to tell you, a man after God's own heart, a woman after God's own heart, cares deeply about those following them. Amen, church? They care deeply about passing the baton. They care deeply about raising up a new standard, watch this, that will hold the standard. And the reason that the book of Judges is there is because after Joshua passed and after those that promised Joshua that they would choose the Lord, they quit passing the baton. It's important, leaders. We need to look our loved ones in the eyeball and say, I'm asking you to promise before me and God that you will carry on what I have set before you. It's important. And that's what Joshua did. And that's what we're going to look at. Uh, so before we go any further, I want to talk to you about choices. And then we're going to read the passage. And then you'll have just a few simple points for this message this evening. We're going to read in a few moments where Joshua says to the children of Israel, choose you this day. The simple message, I'm sorry, uh, title, there we go, is choosing choices. Now, this is a sugar stick of mine. This is an area that I have, uh, if you will, been blessed to have an opportunity to talk about. I've seen it in my own life and in the lives of those around me. This is pretty much where the rubber meets the road on having a good life. If you make good choices, God's going to bless you. He's going to bless you. I call it getting under the spout where the glory comes out. Watch what I have not promised you. I have not promised you a bed of roses. I have not promised you sunshine and roses. You're still going to have difficult days, but watch this. You're going to have the God of the universe walking those difficult days with you. And boy, that makes all the difference in the world. And so these are just some statements about choices that have really honestly guided my life. They've guided my preaching, and they are how I try to make good choices. First, and, and if you're new to us, you've not heard this story, but everyone else here has heard it probably a hundred times. But I got an opportunity to preach a crusade in Colorado and John Smith said, the problem here, Brother Ben, is everybody wants to tell us, don't you worry about us, we're fine. Well, that's where this comes from. Good decisions are based on good information. Help me understand why you're good. What information are you basing that on? Good decisions are based on good information. Now, just as a funny aside, I go back in my mind to when Benjamin and I were over here on the Baloo property, and you may or may not know it, but there are some deep caves. There's some uh, crevasses. <laughs> in other words, there's some big old ditches, and me and Benjamin thought we got the bright idea. We're going to jump one of them. Yeah, this is a few years ago, so I'm still in my 50s when we're doing this. Benjamin no problem, jumps over. And so I'm getting ready to go. Benjamin's got the iPhone recording so that we can make millions when I die. And I, I've scoped it out. I've figured it out. I've figured which foot I'm jumping on. And the whole nine yards, I got a surgical repaired hip. Remember that? And I, I started and I went, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> good decisions are based on good information. You're old, Ben. You hurt. You've got a bad hip. You don't quit it. Stop it. <laughs> Look here, you. You're not doing this. You know, you, you've got to be able to be in control. So here's the next one. You win or lose by the way you choose. You win or lose by the way you choose. That comes from uh, Ants Hylvania, an excellent uh, children's play that we've done years ago at the church camp. Here's a good one. This is from Adrian Rogers. Uh, Gavin and Denise gifted me this 
Bible from Adrian Rogers, and it, it's in here. I tried to find it, but I couldn't. I thought it was actually in the book of uh, Joshua, but it's not. Good, oh, here we go. You can choose your choices. You can't choose your circumstances. You can choose your choices. You can't choose your circumstances as a result of those choices. And so, yeah, you, you want to do that? Go right ahead. You can't necessarily choose what's going to happen as a result. Well, I didn't think they'd act like that. <laughs> well, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah, because you made a poor choice. Now, this is a, a big one here. And, and this is really more a statement of reality than it is a, a, a advice. We are free will moral agents. We are free will moral agents. You have the right to choose. That's why Brother Tom famously says, and he heard it from someone else, God doesn't send anyone to eternal punishment, but he respects their decision. And if you and I choose not to accept Jesus Christ and the finished work on the cross for our sins, he's going to respect that decision. But that's a poor decision in our opinion. Good decisions are based on good information. But watch this. We are a free will moral agent, but we are not free from the responsibility of those choices. Those choices and the responsibility of the, the circumstances are going to come to roost. Brother Gavin famously said uh, years ago now that in the Garden of Eden, there was the tree of uh, basically, well, it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and then the other tree is which God said, you can absolutely eat of this tree every day. Their sustenance could come from this tree. There were other things to eat too, but absolutely this tree would sustain them. And here's what I love about that, and, and Brother Gavin's the first one I ever heard say it. Every day that Adam and Eve walked by that tree and there was fruit on it, that was God saying, I love you. Every day that they walked by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and did not partake, that was them saying, I love you. Every day, church, when the sun comes up, that's God saying, I love you. Now we have an opportunity by our obedience to say, and God, we love you. If you love me, keep my commandments, Jesus said. Good choices can be overshadowed or unmade by bad choices. You ever had a day that just started out great, but then one poor choice after another, mm, not a good day anymore. Good choices can be overshadowed or unmade by bad choices. But watch this. The reverse is true. Bad choices can be overshadowed or unmade by good choices, depending upon the length of time and goodness of God. Sometimes you need some time to, to go by. I have seen relationships healed because of good choices after good choices, even though a really bad choice was made years ago. But over time, in the goodness of God, healing happens. The best choices are the best choices that are remade over and over till they cannot be unmade. Those are the best choices. You wake up, you spend time with God, you live your life in obedience to God, and you repeat, 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 and go to heaven. That's where we're all hoping to get to. Amen, church? The worst choices are the choices that set in motion circumstantial consequences that cannot be undone. Cannot be undone. You know, we have a, a drug right now that in some cases can reverse a bad decision with fentanyl or, you know, these drugs. It's called Norcan, but it doesn't work every time. And sometimes you make a choice that cannot be reversed. Good choices. Now, I, so I shared those with Dawn. I didn't share the points of the message that are coming up because I wanted her to stay, you know, in tune. And this is the one that Dawn added. Good choices can be difficult to make. Good choices can be difficult to make. Good choices are easier to make with good advice. Their safety in a multitude of counselors. My sister-in-law taught my nephew, her oldest son, to do the green light, yellow light, 
red light method with his advisors. So when he had a tough question or a tough decision, he would usually go to her first, and she would say, have you talked to your uncles slash spiritual advisors? And if he hadn't, then he would say, no, but I'm going to. And so on occasion, he would call me and say, okay, Uncle Ben, uh, and I knew you know, what they had agreed upon. He said, I just need to know from you. I need to tell you the situation. You tell me green light, yellow light, or red light. And so he'd tell me what's going on, and I'd tell him. I, in my humble opinion, Brian, it's a you know green light, yellow light, red light, whatever the case may be. Now, I'm going to probably tell you more than he would want me to tell you, <laughs> and that's okay. I don't think he watches our services, so it's, it's okay. If you don't tell him, you're going to see him in two weeks. Don't tell him. I talked about him. Brian got hurt. Brian got hurt in the start of his ministerial career. And so he basically washed his hands of the group that he had been a part of all his growing up days. And the reason that he got hurt was because someone didn't buy into the vision that him and two other men had. Everybody's got a choice. We've had people come here and want us to do something for them. Well, they have a choice to ask, but we have a choice in the matter too. We don't have to do everything an entity wants us to do. Amen, church? It's called freedom. <laughs> we have freedom. And it's not, there's, you know, you'd be surprised at the requests that this church gets in the thing. And your pastor and the leadership of the church, if it's not good for this church, we say thanks, but no thanks. Well, when an entity associated with this uh, you know, association said thanks, but no thanks, then they went, okay, fine, and left. Ten years later, the Lord's bringing him back around to us, and he's struggling. <laughs> he's struggling. You know what I told him? Well, what makes you so hot that you don't have to go the same route every, every you know? I didn't start out as a pastor. I started out as a youth director, youth and music. And I worked my way to where the Holy Spirit said, you're ready. Brian, everybody's got to start somewhere. Church, that's good advice. That's good advice. And young people, please hear me. You're really not advantaged to start off up here. You need to start right here and work your way up and work hard. God will bless you for that. Now, when you get up here, you're still not too good to do whatever needs to be done. I'm going to get in a water slide tomorrow that's got water that's at least 12 months old because we ain't washed it out since last camp. Well, that ain't too wise. Well, I'm going to wear rubber boots, <laughs> but I'm not too good to do that. It needs to be done. So here we go. You ready? This is going to go quick. How to make good choices. Point number one. Learn from the past. Now, here's a fellow that I don't take all of his advice, but this advice is good. Get experience as cheap as you can. Get exp if you want good experience, watch YouTube videos on gun accidents <laughs> or felling trees with a chainsaw. You can get experience cheap, <laughs> and you don't want to go through what those guys went through. Get experience as cheap as you can. Joshua is talking to the Israelites that they had absolutely seen the wrong way to do it, and they had seen the right way to do it. And that reminds me, we need to read the Scripture. Will you stand for the reading and reverence of God's holy word? Here we go in Joshua 24. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah the father of Abram, Ham, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac Jacob and Esau and gave unto Esau Mount Sarai to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. And that's what I shared with you earlier. I sent Moses also and Aaron and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them. And afterward I brought you out 
And I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and ye came unto the sea, and the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen under the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt, and ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season. Now, that's all the history that I shared with you earlier. Verse 8. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side, Jordan, and they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand that ye might possess their land and I destroyed them before you then Balak the son of Zippor king of Moab arose and warred against Israel and sent and called Balaam the son of Beor to curse you but I would not hearken unto Balaam therefore he blessed you still so I delivered you out of his hand and when you went over Jordan and came unto Jericho and the men of Jericho fought against you the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Gergesites and the Hivites and the Jebusites and I delivered them into your your hand. I got a four and a half year college degree to be able to say those words. Here we go in verse 12. And I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor and cities which you built not, and ye dwell in them of the vineyards and olive yards, which ye planted not. Do you eat lavish provision? Verse 14. Now, therefore, Joshua is speaking, he's been speaking to them at words that the Lord wanted him to say, but now he's speaking to them as Joshua. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods with which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, here it is. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up out and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went, and among all the people to whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. Now, he stops here and does something pretty interesting. He argues with them. And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins if I forsake the Lord. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he hath done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve, and his voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and took a great stone and set it there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us, for it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart, every man unto his inheritance. And it came to pass after these things that Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being a hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath, Sarah, which is Mount Ephraim, on the north side of the hill of Gash. Here it is. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that overlived Joshua and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. Father, we ask you to ask your, add your blessings to the reading and preaching of your holy word. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We're almost done. Hang in there. Learn from the past. Joshua reiterated the past. The Egypts, I'm sorry. The Egyptians, the Amorites, other gods. You saw what happened to them. Choose. Choose. God has blessed you all the way. Choose. 
but let the past guide you. Under point number one, learn from the past, be honest about the results, good or bad. Next, realize the majority is seldom right. You notice Joshua didn't come before the Israelites and say, we're going to vote today whether or not we're going to choose and serve God. He led them. Fathers, husbands, leaders, parents, teachers, we've got to lead. Don't take a vote. Lead. It's important. Next, be willing to stand alone. Be willing to stand alone. Church, we're in a time of our existence that some of us are going to have to stand alone for righteousness. God will stand with you. Point number two, live in the present. So learn from the past, but live in the present. The choice to live for God starts with the choice of eternity. If you're here tonight and you've never, ever prayed to receive Christ as forgiveness of your sins, that starts tonight. If you want to know more, we're going to have an invitation. We're not going to go a long time with an invitation, but we're going to have an invitation. And that would be your opportunity to come forward. We'll send you with someone gender appropriate. They'll share the gospel with you. The choice to live for God starts with the choice of eternity. Good choices are backed up with good practices. Good choices are backed up with good practices. Baptism. If you've been saved, but you've never followed the Lord in baptism, we call it the first step of obedience. You need to get that taken care of. Discipleship. It is this church's responsibility, whether it's through Sunday school, Awana, CR, it is this church's responsibility to disciple, to train followers of Christ for those that are saved and baptized. Daily worship, not just on Sundays, daily worship. Tithing, yeah. And these are all things that are good decisions to make. Watch this, as a practice of good choices. Point number three, future choices. Choose you this day must be repeated every day. Choose you this day must be repeated every day. Are you going to serve the Lord tomorrow morning when you wake up? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Every day starts with today, Lord. I choose this day. Did you notice that Joshua said, fear of the Lord? Fear the Lord. Why? Because God is a jealous God. He will lovingly correct you for your sins. Watch this. We are also, though, in the New Testament covenant. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb. God does not deal with us as staunchly as he did in the Old Testament, but he still is a God and the God that should be lovingly, reverently feared. One of my favorite uh, definitions of why you and I should fear the Lord is because the Lord is righteously judging every word, thought, action, and deed. The Lord is righteously judging every word, thought, action, and deed. Surround yourself with excellent examples so that verse 31 will be true of you as well. What was verse 31? Verse 31 was the verse that said, they continued. Let's check that. You know what? Let's check that because my, my, my memory is not to be trusted, right? 31, yeah, and Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that overlived Joshua and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. If you guys follow the leaders that have been placed in your life spiritually all the days of your life, and then you pass that on to those following you, it's going to be a good deal. It's going to be a good experience. So here's a word to the backslidden, and we're almost done. Brother Ben, what's a backslidden person? A person who has slid back. They used to do this. They used to go to every service. They've slid back. They used to have quiet times. They slid back. They used to share their faith. They slid back. And no, this isn't a dance because you know I can't dance. But watch this. Remember what it was like when it was right. As Gerald Mitchell used to say, 
And if you're not closer to the Lord, even by one step, than you were a year ago, you're backslidden. Boy, he was right. Remember what it was like when it was right. Realize when it's not that way anymore. Lord, I have slidden back. I have quit following you the way I used to. Repent. Lord, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm wrong. Return. Lord, do the old works again. Open up that Bible tomorrow. Spend time with him. Share your faith. Fill in the blank. If you're here tonight and any of this has hit you, let's turn this into an old-fashioned altar. Let's seek the Lord. Choose you this day who you will serve. Now, remember, it's, it's not enough. It's not enough for every person here to do this. We've got to call our loved ones to the same standard. I have this expectation of my daughter and two sons. I have this expectation of my wife and those, if you will, that follow me. We need to have the same expectation of those around us. Will you stand, musicians? Will you come? It seemed interesting to me that after they said, no, Joshua, we are going to serve the Lord. He then said, then put away those gods that you have in your tent. See, he knew. He knew that some of them were, were backslidden. And so he, he loved them enough to call them out. Now, your pastor is not going to do that. Uh, we'll do that in the privacy of my office and things of that nature. Now, if I know we've got a situation going on in the church that's prevalent and, you know, rampant, sure, we'll, we'll deal with that. But the bottom line is, is that Joshua knew that they had work to do right then and there. What about you? What about you? Do we have work to do right here and now so that tomorrow morning we can choose the Lord to serve him? Let's sing. Will you come?